all the steps needed to import 3D models. For about a year now, After Effects has been able to import 3D objects as either OBJs or GLBs. GLBs are commonly used in 3D games, VR environments and that sort of thing. OBJs are more common across the board file type. Software like Blender can import and export either format, and Cinema 4D Lite can import OBJ files but not GLB. There's also the file extension GLTF, but everything seems to treat GLB and GLTF as the same. A good source of free models in 2025 is Sketchfab. Creating an account is easy. Then you can start searching. One thing I like is the license filters for who can use what. I'm in the YouTube Partner Program and this video will earn me a couple of quid, literally. So that means I can't use any models released under those Creative Commons licenses that do not allow commercial use. But that still leaves me with plenty of options. When I find a model I like, I just click on the download option and here it is offering me either the model in the Blender format or as a GLB model. Obviously virus check anything you download from the internet. When you first import the model, depending on its size, it might take a while to import and that can feel a little intimidating. I was starting to think AE had crashed. And After Effects even makes the comp for you. If I now go to Layer, New, Camera, and then use the camera controls, I can move around my 3D object. If you do move around before using a camera, don't worry, just go to View, Reset Default Camera. Okay, so next we need a background. And that's where AE's use of lights is awesome. If we import a 360 HDR image, we can use that to light our model without needing any additional lights. If you're not familiar with 3D programs, lighting is one of the hardest tasks, along with curve modeling, character rigging, texturing. There you get the idea. Finding free to use HDR images is all but impossible though. Most places I have found expect a license. Open footage on has loads of good images, but provided under the Creative Commons non-commercial license. Production creators are few, but require signing up for a subscription. You can download a JPEG version for free. HDRI, or High Dynamic Range Image, is a type of image that allows software to respond more like the real world. So help sell realism. Take a look at these two comps. One is using the standard 360 JPEG as an environment map for the lighting and reflection. One is using an HDRI image of the same. If I switch between the two of them, the difference is quite subtle, but see how the lighter areas are brighter? So, that subtlety can be ignored depending on the situation, but with 3D models, those little details can make the difference. If you do know a good source of free HDRI 360 images, please post in the comments and I'll compile a list. I turned to Reddit and found polyhaven.com. These images seem great and I'll be using them for the rest of the tutorial. But just in case you have a 360 JPEG, you can't use these directly. But if you have Photoshop or other photo editor, you can change the bit depth of the image. In Photoshop, that's a case of going to Image, Mode, and change the quality to 32 bits. Then you can use File, Save As, and choose Radiance. This saves your JPEG as an HDR image. Again, never said this was ideal, it's not got high dynamic range, it's just saving it in the right bit depth and format. Oh boy, I'm gonna get comments. With your real or fake HDR image in After Effects, Drag this into your comp and turn it off. Now go to Layer, New, Solid. Make it comp sized and place it at the bottom of your comp. Then go to Effect, Perspective, CC Environment. And in the Effects Controls panel, select your HDR layer as the environment. 
and if I now move the camera around, the environment responds. It is a sphere of infinite radius though, so depending on your camera angles, your model might look like it is hovering. Now let's add this amazing light I was talking about. Go to Layer, New, Light, and choose the light type, Environment. I'm not a big user of the Properties panel, but I need this open in order to select the HDR. So go to Window, Properties. And with the light selected, choose your HDR layer. To help make the model look like it's actually touching the ground, we need some shadows. So go to Layer, New, Solid. I'm making mine square, and I'll hit Enter and rename this to Shadow Catcher. And I'll make it 3D. Next, I'll drag it below the model, see how it cuts into it, that's kinda cool. So now, I'll hit R to expose the rotation properties on the timeline, or use the annoying properties panel, and set the X rotation to 90 degrees. And then I'll just move it down to line it with the wheels. So the shadows are there, but it's blue. I could have made it a great solid and play with transfer modes, but instead, our collapse then expanded on the timeline, and then expand material properties, and set accept shadows to only. And then I'll scale up the solid so we lose the edges. And that's it! With a few simple steps, you can bring models directly into After Effects. Once you know what those hidden steps are, that is.